a couple turns on each string. That'll loosen it enough, but not too much so it doesn't jump off the, the hitch pin on the back. I'll show you that in a second. Just loosen them. I want to keep these strings in order. The first and last are already off. And they've been sent off to be replicated. And the rest of them I would like to keep in order just in case my pattern gets lost or something gets messed up or the string maker requests additional samples. You never know. You have to really be prepared for any kind of situation like that. The strings are nice and loose. I'm going to take the single excuse me, treble string and wind all my bass strings onto it. So, there you go. Pop them off. Place them on the string. Got a knot tight on the other side so it can't go too far. That's it. The strings will never pass each other. They'll stay in sequence. So string them on like a necklace. very little and some have not twisted at all. Twisting strings is when you turn the string this way in the direction of the winding of the copper. One or one and a half times around its own axis. And when you do that, you increase the tension on the wire and increase the tone production and the clarity and the strength of the tone. And uh, it is recommended to do that when you're installing and changing new bass strings. If you don't do that, it might be a little thuddy. You might not get the full tone that you wish for. There you go, coming around the back. Love this plate design, how everything comes apart. This plate is not a one-piece mold. There are several parts to it, and then the Capodastro is even a separate bar too. Everything on screws. Which is pretty cool, but it's a little bit more difficult when it comes time to ba bearing alignment. Everything has to be precise and adjusted in several places. slap this thing together and done. This piano was produced as a masterpiece. This is not a mass-produced instrument at all. It was made in 1840-something. And presented to some empress. Uh, quite a special piano take special care of it. It's in the right place. Here we go. Here's all our strings. Base strings right here. I'm going to clip them off the end of the base on the front there by the tuning pins. And then we'll have a set. I'll hang it up just in case we ever have to come back for reference. So it's time to cut these guys off the front. I got three types of cutters here. I got your old school 
1960s piano cutting, wire cutting pliers. We've got some spring-loaded side cutters here. And we've got what the piano supply sells now is a string cutting tool. Looks scary. It works when you have enough room to get into the area. So let's see how we do with the piano tool first. I'm gonna go further from the pin. Um, because I'd like to leave a little room and pull these off the pliers at the end. I'll show you. I'll show you. Like butter. Just try three at a time. Like butter. Oh yeah. Unbelievable. I just cut 15 strings in like four seconds. These things, there's like a little monster in here. It's like call them the alligator snapping turtle of the piano string wire cutting pliers. Look at this thing though. We're going up in tension. We're going up in uh, gauge too. And uh, this thing is cutting two at a time. Almost cut the tool. Woohoo! Okay, chef. I'll give it to you. These are great. But like I said, we got lots of room here to work with this. Sometimes you gotta get up close. No way are these gonna get in there. The old school piano tuning, wire cutting. Excuse me, I said piano tuning. The old school wire cutting pliers. You're able to use the side of them to get it anywhere. These things you have to be right dead on facing. Facing the string. Which we got the opportunity to do. A little hook helps us a little bit. Lift these strings out. Handy hook. Free to go. See if we can finish this guy off. Alright. All the base strings are clipped. Now we can just pull them out of the A-grabs. Pull, pull, pull. Yeah, pull. Pull. Done. Done. All right. Here we go. Woo! I'm going to have to fix that. Got to fix a lot of them. All right, taking these strings out of the pins, you gotta be careful, watch your eyes. Maybe you wanna wear your goggles. Wanna protect those eyes. Only on one set. See, just like that. The thing can just fly off and stab you in the face. bunch of dudes out there that could show you living proof on their face. The other way of pulling that off, you can use a screwdriver. The screwdriver would go right into this little ear here. If there's enough room. This gauge wire is so thick by the ends here that it's very hard for the flathead to make its way in there. So I don't want to break the screwdriver either. But that's, see, it's 
the other way. A little less risky, a little more technical. maybe. Uh, gotta work it in there. Once it pulls out a little thin, then you can straight lift it out. With pliers or screw. Then it's loose. The trick is to loosen the string from the pin. See, as you get a little knack to it, the pace will pick up, and as the gauge of the string will lighten, it'll also be easier. I like to start at the difficult side. That's better than the work getting more and more difficult on you as you do it. It gets slightly easier. trade-off is in the base section you got heavier gauge but more room around each pin once you get into the lighter gauges it gets more densely populated and harder to get your tools in there how is this not like dentistry dentistry is pretty rough Love my dentist though. They hurt you. Really don't want to scratch the brass underneath here. This is a brass plate. original. Tuning pins will change and the strings will change, but the structural parts, the brass plate, the soundboard, keep it all. See, it's getting easier, picking up the face. Now I'm going to take the flyer, grab the long end, hold it directly above a little turn so it pitches and pulls out like this. Maybe cover this with your hand so the wire, or if it breaks off, the other piece doesn't want to fall into your face. Somehow they always find the eye. I'm telling you, these flying projectiles know exactly where your face is. There's probably a magnet somewhere up in the head that attracts all these projectiles. I got a lot more ridiculous conclusions because this piano shop thing is um, very interesting. When it's two in the morning and you're talking to the piano. After this part, the tuning pins will be safe to take out. Nothing will come flying out. You won't cut yourself. You won't scratch up the piano.
so here are a couple tuning pins from a uh, Steinway Grand Piano, 1920s, Model M, Model L. Uh, let's see what one of these square tuning pins looks like. From the 1850s, 1840s. Threading is totally different, and it's a lot shorter. The Erard pin is in the middle, the 1920s Steinway L is on the left, 1920s Steinway M is on the right. The threading on the Erard pin is completely different. Excuse my hands. Thank you.